What's the biggest lie pop culture taught us about and romance? That there is a point you reach where you get your happily ever after, then you just get to coast. That's not how relationships work, it's not the moment he tells you at the night party how he loves that you get cold when it's 71 degrees out or when you get married in a big ball gown. It's all the little moments, the everyday caring, the small affections and the avoidances of trust pitfalls. They add up to a happily now. But there's not a point you can hang your hat up and say, okay, I got this marriage thing sorted out. Now I get to do whatever I want. That love is easy and relationships will have romance just fall into your lap if it's meant to be. Real life is not a movie and it gives people a very wrong image of what a healthy relationship looks like. When I first met my boyfriend of going on 7 years now, we were 16 and 18, completely in love, absolutely in the honeymoon phase and thought it would honestly always be that way. Come a year in and the problem started being that young and in love is a whirlwind. Facing early adulthood together is difficult, and honestly it was a bit tough there for a while, but I love him even more now than I thought was possible, like, we got through that. We've still got more struggles to go I'm sure, but I've noticed relationships go through phases, much like we do ourselves because at that point your partner becomes an inherent part of you. It's definitely not easy that's for sure, something I naively wasn't expecting, but now that I'm older and have matured a bit, I wouldn't want it any other way. What's the sunshine without a little rain? Me and my wife had a lot of bumps in the road. When we first started dating, we were long distance, so there was a lot of trust that we were being faithful. We made the most of it when we got together and humped like rabbits when we were together. But it was hard, a lot of arguing. Over the Ohone, a lot of I need you here. She finally moved out here for grad school, the original reason we got together and tried for a long distance. She had to live alone because my job was too far from her school. For three years she was alone in a city she was unfamiliar with every weekend I visited her. It was a lot better seeing each other, but it was never perfect. We still argued about stuff's got eye to fights. The love making slowed down, there no longer was the need to make it count. Then we moved in together and all hell broke loose. Lysing with someone is a lot. There is no cute oh this flower will look great in our window. Nope, it's whose couch do we keep? Why do we have all your stuff? Our biggest fight ever was over how to load the dishwasher a dishwasher. We didn't speak to each other for days and lived in the same apartment. Years later we got engaged after I had to ask her twice. We had a 7 year engagement because we had a sort of checklist before getting married. We bought a house. Let me tell you, finance is a big argument in itself. We eventually got married and planning for kids later. At first, read you probably think why the are they married. Reality is, it's been the best 11 years of my life. Through all the challenges, we were there together for one another. We would go on trips together and date nights often. Dizzy today we make one another smile and laugh. We have each other's backs. Point is love isn't easy. You don't break up at the first argument or fight. Love gets through the bad times. Side note if you argue more than you smile that's a sign to move on. Romantic movies are nice but the happy ever after isn't it the first kiss. For the love of God, do not interrupt a wedding. It will not go how you think it will. In Poland when you get church wedding, they announce it few weeks beforehand on announcement board and church internet site in case anyone has objections. Doubt anyone reads it though, cause when I had wedding with my wife, priest posted it as Arthamal marriage with Arthamal and noon had any objections. That we're supposed to have long sessions. Honestly a good 15 minus 20 minutes is pretty good for me. I once overheard two girls chatting while they were walking through the quad in college. One was saying, boasting that she and her guy went at it for 4 hours last night. Honey, if it takes you 4 hours, you're not doing it right. Hire an efficiency consultant or something. Persistence usually isn't romantic. It's usually creepy. I wasted many, many years pursuing that one guy I thought was the one. His friends liked me, he made compliments on my looks and on my s's, everything seemed promising, so why didn't it turn out the way I wanted? Well, surprisingly, some people just aren't romantically interested in you, no matter how much work you put into it. So easy to understand, but so hard to accept. Neither my stubbornness nor a miracle could turn the friendship we had into a relationship. Plus, I must have seemed 
desperate, which is unattractive as hell. It's okay to take your time, but it's also necessary to know when move on. Really just better for everyone. That there's no such thing as clean up afterwards. Everyone just has a slight post-coital glisten and that's about as far as it goes. No awkward cum waddle. No wet spot on the mattress that gets cold way too quickly so you both bend your bodies around it so you can still snuggle without touching it. No towel that probably should have been washed about two weeks ago and is getting to the point where it might make a worthy substitute for a crowbar with how stiff it is. Oh, and if you do it in a horror movie, you're 100% gonna die that you'll have it when you're a teen, or there's supposed to be shame in being a virgin after 18. When I was in high school I've met people who've told me they lost it at 13 and I was disgusted. It's not a race. It's an action you take with someone you want to commit with. It's for fun and for having kids, so do it with someone you can see yourself spending your life with. You can't determine that with someone under 18, and if you're under 18 and they're 18 and up, Call the cops. If you're the nice guy, the best friend, they'll eventually give you a chance. As a person who succeeded, for a lack of a better word, it kind of ed. I was head over heels for this girl I met in uni that by chance actually worked at a fast food joint in the same plaza I worked in. After recognizing her and being like, holy, it's that girl from class. Things kind of progressed. Her friend from work who happened to sit in on the class one day recognized me as the guy who came in a lot. That was kind of my in, and we started chatting and eventually began studying. Together, fast forward like a year and we barely talk. Basically an awkward encounter happened at my family's cottage where I made a move, she felt trapped and needed some space. We didn't talk for like 2 minus 3 months. I was really hurt over it, but I respected it and went no contact. I was blackout, so I don't remember what I did but I know it upset her and I never pressed. Not to excuse it either but I literally have no memory of it so I can't even say if what I did was that bad. I lost a lot of weight that summer after she went no contact. Partly because I wanted to and had broken my arm and there was nothing I could do but walk, so I just walked. Second was because I was kind of in an I'll show you spite mentality. Come the fall, we had another class together. I dreaded seeing her as I knew it would be awkward. She started talking to me as if nothing had happened. I was cautious but I slowly let her back into my world, which I regret a lot now. Fast forward, in the next 18 months I feel like she had completely taken over my life. I had never dated before this, as a 24 year old fat guy, rock music nerd that played in a band and hung out. Solely with my bandmates, losing weight, the introduction of Tinder, and sudden attention from the opposite was weird for me. I dated a few girls to get my feet under me, but she always had an opinion on them dot 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 as a friend. I always thought this was weird. She would ghost me when she met someone new, but would not hesitate to text me almost instantly when I mentioned I was going to be bringing someone along to a mutual hangout. Girls come and go and I finally meet someone I find both insanely attractive and fun, and she harpoons that. Friend admits that she likes me and of course, new girl I just met I completely forgot about because friend was always the one I wanted. It never got any better. I was always second fiddle to her friends. Before we were officially dating, we had been FWB for a while and she knew I wasn't seeing that she likes me and of course, new girl I just met I completely forgot about because friend was always the one I wanted. It never got any better. I was always second fiddle to her friends. Before we were officially dating, we had been FWB for a while and she knew I wasn't seeing. By extension they had become my friends too, but we never spoke outside of these mutual gatherings and she never went to anything my friends did. She had a habit of bringing up that what we had together was not organic and that starting as friends wasn't what she had ever really seen. Her life partner to be. I should have seen the flares at that point, but I didn't because I cared about her. Frankly, it was exhausting trying to keep up with her moods one day she was loving and caring, the next she acted like she hated me. When she dumped me year after we began hooking up, and nine months into the relationship, she broke up with me on my work lunch break, in her car in the parking lot and basically said see you later. She was on Tinder within two weeks after searching to see what she wanted as dating wasn't what she wanted right now. I wanted to date so I went on Tinder fairly soon after. Long story short, I am not saying all relationships like this work out this way. 
I am sure there are many happy couples that had everything right under their nose as friends for a long time before realizing what they wanted was right there. For me, though, it was a nightmare and I look back and think what the heck were you thinking? The only good thing to come of it was that it lead me to my current girlfriend, the love of my life and we have been together for 8 happy years. So some good did come of it. Opposites attract, my ex and I fell for this one. We were and are really good friends, but like we made each other miserable in a relationship. He likes social interaction infrequently, I want it nearly constantly, he is a distance runner who thinks hiking up a literal mountain is a casual. Walk, I think walking to miles is a workout. So on and so forth, but like we like the same TV shows and movies and music and play a lot of the same games, so occasionally playing games together and taking about whatever shows. We are watching type of friendship is really good, trying to date was really bad. The idea that love at first sight is real. It's a nice sentiment, but love takes time and effort to develop. I'm not sure about this one. I feel like love at first sight has some truth in it. Research has shown that humans make strong, long-lasting judgments about a person in a matter of seconds after coming face to face with someone. On the other hand, our brains are wired to release a giant hormone cocktail the moment we click with a possible romantic partner. While some people might define love as requiring long-standing companionship, I truly do believe you can fall in love with someone at first sight. Maintaining it is what takes time and effort. That you cannot be happy single and it's better to work hard for a so-so or bad relationship than to be single. In my early 20s I miserably tried to make an abusive relationship work while fully aware it's abusive and thinking I'm this brilliant 5D chesser that can put up with the abuse just to keep the person I love happy and to not be single. Got out at 27. He dumped me after all the effort I put in for almost a decade. When I tried to leave before that, he threatened suicide or harming our pets. Almost 8 years single now, no or dating during it because I didn't feel like it. Never felt happier or freer, not rushing to get back into things. If it'll happen, it'll happen. First couple years were tough. As time went on, I learned to live and thrive alone and focus on my own interests and hobbies and pets and child from the abusive dude. Many of my friends and co-workers pity me when they hear how long I've been single. I stopped sharing it just to avoid pointless drama. I do wish we would teach people it's okay to be alone if you haven't met the right person. Settling or putting up with abuse or toxicity just for in some dates. Not worth it. That falling in love is the greatest thing that can happen to you. In reality, falling in love is a tie experience when the person you love doesn't love you back. Also, that love is an emotion instead of a choice. Maybe at first, love is an emotional thing, but to make it last, you actually have to choose to show love for the person you're with on a daily basis. Falling out of love is as much about the choices made that led to that point as it is about the emotion itself. Everyone has habits that are going to annoy you. Everyone has things about them that are frustrating. But being and Staying in love requires actually looking last those things and choosing to continue your partnership, providing those annoying and frustrating things aren't abusive. I managed to speed run finding myself and when I met my husband, I was living on my own for about 6 months. I honestly don't think I would have ever had a good relationship with him if I didn't have that. I was 20 when we met and I was thinking I would get married at 30 at that point. Well, he came along and messed up all my plans and I got married at 25. I still feel super young to be married, but we got married after 5 years of being together. We went through a lot of stuff too, especially the pandemic which made us realize we could not ever live without each other. We knew very quickly that we wanted to marry each other but he respected the way I wanted to do things before getting married, like moving in together and making sure we were compatible living together. People always said that marriage changes everything, all of my in-laws kept spouting that bullcrap and ask how married life is for us. Honestly, pretty much the exact same, which I think it's how it's supposed to be. I got very lucky because this is my first adult relationship and I could not live without my husband. As much as I advocate for people to explore themselves in their 20s, sometimes you do just know. Don't force yourself into a relationship or a marriage. Wow, this is a pet peeve of mine, cause it f ed me up for a long time, and at the same time, 
prevented me from getting a fed, men do manly things, then women will initiate closeness and, where manly might mean chasing away bears, but more often than not, it's the toxic. Wow, this is a pet peeve of mine, cause it f me up for a long time, and at the same time, prevented me from getting f -ed. men do manly things, then women will initiate closeness and, where manly might mean chasing away bears, but more often than not, it's the toxic, messed up on so many levels, basically teaches men that it's necessary to do the toxic stuff, and at the same time, that it's okay to neglect people s's, teaches a distorted picture of gender roles, and much more. Toxic relationships, codependency, and objectifying people to make up for our own mental health issues is perfectly fine. It's just a zany personality quark. An extension of this is something I noticed in the show Euphoria, which I guess is supposed to be some kind of representation of Gen Z today. Of course, I know it isn't. But basically, it really unnerved, unsettled me that all the relationships had to have this element of borderline abuse to be considered interesting. I feel like I remember a line that's like, I love how ed up you are, and it's just so-so. Cringe, which is probably the point, but I'm not sure everyone gets that nuance. This further extends to this belief that everyone has a kink, and you're only interesting Wally if you have some deep-seated ed up desire. It's problematic to me that people would tie their whole Yule, identity and for some even more than that to a desire to be deemed interesting rather than just being the truth. Vanilla can be amazing if it's with the right person and in the right circumstances, and that's okay. I'm gonna go a little dark with this. You cannot save someone's life by loving them enough. If you're dating someone who is suicidal, it is them that needs to make that decision to live themselves. You might think trying to go the extra mile to help them out will save them and then, Things will get better after the fact, but you're completely wrong. They will use you as a crutch through life and never get better. If you aren't happy with your partner, talk to them about your feelings. If they refuse to change, you aren't a priority in their life. Leave, some people might. Things will get better after the fact, but you're completely wrong. They will use you as a crutch through life and never get better. If you aren't happy with your partner, talk to them about your feelings. If they refuse to change, you aren't a priority in their life. Leave, some people might. Or having with you. When you go to meet with them, you should be happier than you are without them. You shouldn't feel a sense of relief when you leave their side. And yet feeling those things also doesn't mean there's something wrong with you, or that you're some quack. Causing problems. It's a warning sign that you are being manipulated. Learn to trust your feelings, your real feelings, and not the censored ones your brain offers you. That is always amazing and always feels good. Turns out, it's like any other human activity, it can be really tie. In fact, it can even be really tie most of the times. And as far as love goes, love is brain chemistry. It's constantly romanticized, like it's some kind of magical power and this gives way to many people unrealistic expectations about it, making them make stupid, stupid decisions, love conquers it all, and it doesn't, it's just your brain producing the right juices and making you feel attracted to another person. All it takes is ignoring those feelings for a while, then the chemical reaction ends and you're back to normal. That your soulmate is someone who you fall in love with madly and deeply, with great passion and sweeping you off your feet every day. Rather, you have to like your life partner, not just love. You'll be spending lots of time together, so you have to at least tolerate each other. Also, as you progress, both of you grow and change, and you have to learn to live with the new you and the new them. I'm lucky to have someone that I love and also like spending time with. She's not the most intense, passionate, unreserved love I've ever experienced, but our relationship has the most breadth and depth from years of learning each other's routines, preferences, and once in a while, finding ways to still surprise each other. If you develop a crush on someone else your current relationship is over, you'll never be happy together so you should break up and be happy with the other person. Also, it's the same as cheating for whatever reason. Developing a crush while being in a relationship is natural and can indicate that you're missing something in your current relationship, but it doesn't mean you're a cheater and should break up for the sake of both of you. You need to evaluate your feelings and talk about them with your partner. In my case a few years back I developed a minor crush on my friend because 1. I was curious about the other side of my bioality and 2. Because my previous relationships didn't work out I was really insecure about this one, 
Me and my boyfriend talked it over and don't have this issue anymore. Whenever I feel like I'm falling for someone else, I remind myself that I actually don't. I just need something like a hug or a compliment and talk with my boyfriend about it. Relationships aren't perfect and require communication. If we'd follow our hearts, our relationships would end as soon as the honeymoon stage is over. One of the biggest lies that pop culture has taught us about and romance is that it always follows a predictable script or formula. From movies and TV shows to romance novels and pop songs, we are often presented with a very idealized version of relationships and intimacy. These portrayals often include tropes like love at first sight, the perfect first date, or the big romantic gesture. In reality, relationships and Yule experiences are often much more complicated and messy than these simplified portrayals would lead us to believe. Everyone has their own unique preferences, desires, and challenges when it comes to romance and, additionally, healthy relationships require communication, compromise, and mutual respect, things that are often glossed over or ignored altogether in pop culture. Another common misconception that pop culture promotes is the idea that is always easy and pleasurable. In reality, Yule experiences can be awkward, uncomfortable, and sometimes even painful. It's important for people to have realistic expectations and to communicate with their partners about their needs and boundaries. In conclusion, pop culture often presents a skewed and idealized version of an romance that doesn't always reflect the reality of these experiences. It's important to approach these topics with a critical eye and to have realistic expectations based on your own unique needs and experiences. That you are compatible with someone you like. Yule compatibility is a thing. If your partner likes foreplay and you don't it won't be fun. Or if you need multiple times a day and they need it once a week. There are so many scenarios and it's not like oh we like each other it'll be amazing due to the tension between us. We she just lays there and he finishes after 10 strokes. Or he wants to keep going but it's hurting her so she asks him every other minute if he's done so it takes him a total of 45 minutes to finish because it becomes a chore versus pleasurable. I feel like in the past decade or two it's become much more typical for romance movies to start out wally casual and gradually develop into something serious and loving, showing less of how couples treat each other and more about their rock chemistry. While that's certainly something that can happen, it's a bad expectation to set. Beyond relationships getting physically intimate too early being potentially problematic for the progression of the relationship, these movies also tend to neglect showing the work that goes into it and the continuous effort to be loving and respectful in your words and actions. Romance is not like when the male character is running through the airport trying to get to female character you will probably be tackled. Not all women come from just penetration sometimes we just need little bit of foreplay and some toys to get things going. Toys are not your enemy either a lot of women like to play around in the bedroom to see what works and what doesn't work them. Relationships are nothing like in books it requires a lot of work, communication, doing the little things make things easier on your so chipping in for your share of house. Work, cooking dinner or even just meal prepping the night before takes a lot of stress out of dinner if you both have busy schedules due to work. Making time for yourselves as a couple do surprise date nights by their favorite things. Not everyone grows up after high school some people just Get stuck in their adult life because they peaked in high school. High school, college are not like the movies high school movies and shows truly do lie about what it's like. Granted there are some really Thai schools and there are some really good schools it can be a hit or miss. Work, places can be just like school with some people just downright holes to any newcomer to the workplace or to even the ones who had been there for years. Managers and high ups can be total holes as well.